please stand up for the prayer. Father, we descend the Spirit. Amen. Class, how are you all doing today? Very good. Well, today is a wonderful day to learn something new, isn't it? Yes. But before I forget, can any one of you recall what was our past lesson all about? Yes? Very good. A new lesson is somewhat connected with our past lesson. Yes. Before I start, what comes into your mind when you hear the word barrier? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, you've got the idea. Yes. Good. So, barrier is something that blocks or intervenes the flow of something. How about communication barrier? Does anyone know the definition of communication barrier? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've got the idea also. For today, I'm standing all of you to tackle and discuss all about communication barrier. The reason why I chose this topic is because it is very, very prevalent and very common in every classroom set up. Yes. So let's start the definition of the communication barrier. So, so this is the definition of a communication barrier anything that prevents us from receiving and understanding the messages others use to convey the information, ideas, and thoughts. They can interfere with or block the message you are trying to send. So this is very common in all types of conversations, in all types of communication. Because these barriers are very um, common for they are the reason why the message is having a hard time in transferring from one person to another because of this of these um, blockage or distractions from transferring the information to the other receiver okay that's the communication buyer common communication buyers first Anything that interferes with communication can lead to a lack of understanding or misinterpretation of the message. Students are often mentally distracted when a teacher is attempting to communicate with them. So this is very common, especially to the elementary students. Because um, oftentimes, when a teacher is teaching something or giving the lessons, a child can have a difficulty in understanding especially when he or she have a diverse attention whether it may be thinking from any type of entertainment or any topics that are not related to the to the lesson more often than not it results to misinterpretation or misunderstanding between the student and the teacher Next is, highfalutin words are the reason students often have a hard time understanding the topic. So yes, this is also common. As a student, I was very, I was very misunderstood because oftentimes when I read something, when I read a, a difficult word or the, the word that I cannot understand well, that's the reason I give up on reading something. So yes, highfalutin words are somewhat can be considered as a communication barrier because 
there are many students who will be discouraged when they when they read a certain word that they are not familiar with thus um, discontinuing their information students may also have sensory impairments that, that interfere with communication so for example of the sensory impairments are the vision vision rather visionary problems or for the students that have a difficult time in reading something because of their um, blurredness of their eyes and others uh, difficult having have a difficult time in understanding the message especially when they are in the back of the seat and they're having a hard time hearing what the teacher says or sometimes the it's just simply the student lack focus the student lacks focus in listening or understanding the message so that are some sensory impairments that can interfere with communication how to avoid communication barriers send clear messages so these are the types of communication barriers that should be avoided um, the messages that are very blurry or have a vague or ambiguous type of messages these are the tips to avoid communication barriers don't talk too fast reading or speaking fast will be the reason why the students or your listeners will be having a hard time in understanding your point or your message so when explaining something you must be speaking thoroughly and precisely and do not rush in explaining things next is don't be too wordy while having a slow message can be have can be the reason of a slow understanding you must not be too wordy also too much cannot be too useful in explaining a brief but concise explanation is somewhat more useful than having too many words that will lead to confusion to the listeners okay be aware of filters that can distort your message yes in giving information you must be precise and avoid the things that can divert to the main topic or the main point that you're trying to convey ask purposeful questions to make sure you were understood so after that you may ask the questions that is useful and relevant to the topic use words carefully use your words carefully use words that are very um, relevant very precise and very appropriate for the topic don't use words that are not applicable to the topic that you've chosen use language that is simple and precise so like what I've said earlier more precise means more understandable the language that you will be using must be the language that everyone under understand in the whole class avoid words that might be vague or ambiguous yes like what I've said earlier avoid words that have a very ambiguous meaning or the words that can be too difficult for the students to understand use repetition repetition is a valuable tool in ensuring communication accuracy so repetition is very important because the more you repeat something the more the students will understand okay how to minimize communication barrier have clarity of thought before speaking up so have a clarity of thought before you speak you must have a 
concrete idea of what you're going to say already before speaking out. Learn to listen. So when you speak, you must know, also know how to listen. Because communication cannot be completed without a give and take system. Take care of your body language and tone. So when giving a message, you must be mindful of what you are saying and what you are doing while, while doing so. Build up your confidence by asking for feedback and observing others. After saying and after giving your message, you must test the audience if they are listening by asking them questions or asking them for feedback and observe their behavior when you are speaking in front of them. Communicate face to face in the important issues. You must communicate. It may be not face to face, but the important part of this is the important issues. The important issues must be solved before or after your message. So we already know the we already know the communication barriers. And we already know how to avoid them. But if it's very inevitable, we already know how to minimize them. So this is the the speaking skills. Speaking skills are very important for us to prevent communication barriers in the future. We can prevent communication barrier from happening again. So number one, nervousness is normal practice and prepare. So nervousness is very common. Even I am nervous sometimes. So there is the the only way to minimize nervousness is to be prepared know your audience your speech is about them not you okay. so in in spreading a certain information or message you must first know who will be your listeners know that the message that you will be giving to them must be appropriate for them to what type of audience they will be Next, organize your material in the most effective manner to attain your purpose. So in the first part, you must know what will be in the materials that you will be using. Watch for feedback and adapt to it. So after speaking, you must know the feedbacks and learn how to cope with what they are trying to give to you, what feedback they will be giving to you after giving the information okay let your personality come through so in speaking you don't have to be pretentious or anything just be yourself because the more you 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 will be genuine the more you will be understood with what you're trying to convey use humor tell stories and use effective language so giving information can be somewhat boring so you can tell jokes or any type of appropriate humor that you can give you can have while messaging and giving information to them use your voice enhance effectively so you you cannot just say something without any hand gestures so your voice plays a big impact also it must be audible and clear so that everyone can understand what we are trying to say and the last one grab attention at the beginning and close with a dynamic end so yes it's somewhat self-explanatory in starting in starting you should you should have a lines that will be attention seeking or some something that can attract the attention to all and close with a dynamic end so make sure before you end you must make sure you, you must make sure that everyone understood 
your message. Okay? Okay. So, any questions regarding today's topic? The communication barrier? The speaking skills? Okay. So, I guess everyone already understood the lesson. Now, let's move on to the evaluation. So, I want you all to group yourselves into five and then pick a leader. Okay. I will give a certain topic in each leader. I will give a certain topic and then you will give an impromptu speech about it. Okay. So, the members will ask Will we listen carefully because after that you will be giving a a full um, summary of what the leader is trying to say okay. with what the leader said a while ago okay okay so this will test if the members and the listeners and also the speaker have a great communication and I will test if you all don't have any communication barrier or have okay okay so as for the assignment I want you all to list five communication barriers that is found in your home or anywhere that you live in okay list down the five communication barriers that you found and list them in the in one half sheet of paper yes. so do you have any questions none so that will be all for this for today I hope you guys understood. I hope you guys understood with what I'm saying. And thanks for listening. Okay? Okay, guys. Okay, class dismissed.